Hello and welcome. I hope that you are having a fantastic day today. We're going to cover Bitcoin news today, starting out with Bitcoin whales hit a two-year high. So Bitcoin whales are investing more and more and more into Bitcoin as we're approaching the halvening. So what does that tell you? If you had several million dollars, say six million or more, that you wanted to invest somewhere, people are choosing, people that have those kinds of deep pockets are putting their money into Bitcoin. So why is that? We're going to explore that a little bit. Also, we're going to look at an altcoin that in the last 28 days has gained 102%. And then finally... China is testing its central bank digital currency crypto coin. And so they've gone into a public testing phase. And normally, you're not going to go into a public testing phase with something that's as high profile as the China's central bank digital currency unless you're really confident it's going to work out really well because you don't want public sentiment to turn against your project because of bugs and other failures. So things are getting very, very interesting. It looks like China may be the first major large country, and I say it that way because there's other countries that have already released their own central bank digital coins, Uh, but China would be one one of the big ones you know, China is a big country, and if they get their central bank digital coin out in the market first, that's a big deal. So let's get into it. Should I buy Bitcoin now or should I wait? That is an important question, and we're going to help you try and answer that. We're going to give you ideas to help you take profits and avoid losses. And can we get this video to 99 likes? Smash the like button. It really helps us out. I'm not a financial advisor. This is not financial advice. This is my opinion. Um, And so cryptocurrency involves substantial risk of loss. I would, I would, I, I encourage you to read this disclaimer and take it seriously before you make any investments. Don't just listen to what I have to say. Do your own research and check it out thoroughly because there is a high risk of loss. Now, at the moment, Bitcoin is trading at six thousand seven hundred and eighty-five dollars and sixteen cents. Uh, before I started this video, Bitcoin was higher than that, and it was still in the green, and so it just has taken a a slight downturn over the last few minutes. Currently, the time and date is this is April 15th, the uh, what what's normally tax day, and it's 6.34 a.m. Central Standard Time. As you can see, we have a, a variety of colors with reds and greens. When I started the video, all of this was pretty much green, and so... In the last few minutes, it's changed up a little bit. We'll need to watch this more carefully throughout the day. Bitcoin whale numbers hit two-year high as investors mirror 2016 halvening. So there are more Bitcoin whales now than at any point in the last two years, and that mimics a trend from the 2016 halvening, according to data. In its last week on-chain report, April 9th, Monitoring resource Glassnode revealed that the current number of major Bitcoin investors are extremely similar to early 2016. Specifically, 30 days before Bitcoin's 2020 halvening, the number of entities holding at least 1,000 Bitcoin, and that's worth at this moment about uh, 6.78 million, is... Now just under 1,850 addresses. At the start of quarter two 2016, several months before the previous happenings, the number of such entities was almost exactly the same. The almost uncanny resemblance between these two identical points in two Bitcoin halving cycles suggests that the whales know the market well. 
The trend implies that despite uncertain uncertain market environment, whales remain confident that now is a good time to be accumulating Bitcoin, suggesting that they believe that there is further room for growth. And so this is a chart of the number of addresses with um, uh, balances of greater than 1,000 Bitcoin. And this is, you know, uh, the basically it's not quite monthly. It's more like quarterly. You know, here you see January 18th. Here's January uh, 2016, January 2018. Um, and so these tick marks look like they're about every six months. So, and you can see this red line is almost exactly the same at a very, very similar point prior to the previous halvening and where we're at today. So quite interesting. Also notice this big dip. This is the dip that we had here uh, just a few weeks ago in March where the entire, uh, the entire financial and everything crashed and you can see that there was a sudden dip with people selling very quickly, but then it followed with another phase of people accumulating these addresses with a thousand Bitcoin or more. And so that's definitely on the growth, growing quite a bit. Meanwhile, it's not just whales who are accumulating. Last month, Glassnode noted that wallets containing a balance of at least one Bitcoin were seeing new highs. At the time, Cointelegraph cited in-house analyst Keith Waring, who further believes that the major miners will use lower prices to consolidate their positions and accumulate more Bitcoin prior to the halvening scheduled mid-May. So this is looking very, very good and very, very bullish. I mean, if you had six or seven million dollars that you're investing in anything or more because these are wallets with a thousand Bitcoin or greater. If you had a significant amount of money that you're investing in something, you're going to do a little bit more research than the average guy that's just investing 200 bucks or even the people that have invested into a single Bitcoin of around six or seven thousand dollars of their money into a single Bitcoin. And so uh, this indicates to me that some of the smart money, so to speak, is getting very interested, very exciting about the prospects of, you know, the 2017 halvening. Now, here's the other thing to keep in mind. Look where Bitcoin was around the halvening in January, July of 2016. You can see that it was riding right around $1,600. I'm sorry, that's not right. Around $400. Yes, that makes more sense to me. It was writing right around $400, $300, $200, $500 before the halvening, and then it spiked all the way to $20,000. And so that was more than a 10x increase in only a one or two year period. You know, about 12 to 18 months, it, it went up 10 times its, its uh, current price. So that's a really good sign. Now, this altcoin has thrived amid global lockdown, seeing 102% growth in the last 28 days. Little known altcoin Komodo, KMD, had a strong month amid the global lockdown. In the past 28 days, the KMD coin price increased 102% against the dollar, while many larger cap cryptocurrencies struggled for momentum. From a coin price of 23 cents on March 16th, the value of Komodo climbed to a peak of 48 cents on April 14th. That's a 102% increase. So the blockchain projects can build on Komodo's side chains using 10 different programming language, while its own blockchain is backed up on Bitcoin every 10 minutes. In 2019, Komodo released its atomic DEX a decentralized atomic swap protocol which can trade coins between different blockchains without requiring a third-party exchange. And so if you're interested in learning how you can trade cryptocurrencies without having to deposit your money onto an exchange, the atomic swap DEX is one way you can accomplish that. And the atomic swap DEX is actually using the Komodo cryptocurrency chain and its um, 
uh, you know, it's blockchain. So Komodo drew wide attention in late March when Ethereum founder Vitalik Buterin decried the lack of trustless methods for trading Bitcoin and Ethereum trustlessly. As the Komodo team pointed out at the time, the Atomic DEX is a method of doing precisely that. Komodo finds itself placed among the top 70 cryptocurrencies by volume as of press time. In the past 24 hours, KMD's largest market was found on Binance, where KMD BTC pair accounted for $1.2 million worth of trades. That's in a single day. That's in a single day. So Komodo is a one of the larger cryptocurrencies out there. It's doing a significant volume when you look at it doing $1.2 million worth of trades in a single day. So there's decent liquidity uh, with the Komodo uh, cryptocurrency. And so, you know, it's, it's interesting. This has actually become an opportunity for Komodo to get a lot more attention. Komodo is not a cryptocurrency that I have followed in the past. But after reading this article and sharing it with you, I'm definitely going to give it more attention and it might be worth your time as well. One other article I wanted to interject that I didn't put on the uh, uh, thumbnail for this video is about BACT. I don't know if you know about BACT. BACT is a cryptocurrency exchange that was created by a joint venture with the company that owns the New York Stock Exchange, Microsoft and Starbucks. Those three companies spent four years and 500, almost $500 million. They came close to spending $500 million to develop the backed exchange and a number of other features with it. So a couple of quick takeaways of the article. Backed primarily serves as a Bitcoin futures trading platform. Right now, Backed primarily serves financial institutions and institutional investors, and so they primarily serve the big boys. It also plans to extend its services with custody solutions and payment tools. <coughs> We're going to cover in this video the custody solutions and payment tools that are provided by Backed. If you're interested in more detailed information about Backed, which is covered by these two first two points, in this article, I'm going to leave you a link in the YouTube comments in the YouTube description so that you can navigate to this article and read the parts that I don't share that you're interested in. <clears throat> and so the article does cover the history of Bact a little bit, goes into the Bitcoin futures, talks about uh, the physical Bitcoin settlement that Bact provides, talks about Bact's custody services. But the part I want to focus on is its payments and rewards. The company's latest effort is the Backed app, a mobile application for spending and managing digital assets. So here's some pictures, screenshots of the actual Backed app. And you can see by this little ring that it's going to handle a variety of currencies, not just Bitcoin um, and not just fiat or dollars and not just um, uh, uh, cryptocurrency, um, but they're actually going to handle things like rewards miles and other types of points, other types of reward points. So if you had Starbucks rewards or uh, airline miles or miles on your um, credit card, uh, many of those uh, types of reward points can be managed on the backed app. In fact, you can see how they have uh, the different categories. So one category here is crypto. Another category is rewards. Another category is in-game points. And another category is cash. And so the backed app is going to be able to manage all of those. And you'll be able to literally use your in-game points to buy coffee at Starbucks. So this is getting quite, quite interesting. Though the app will support Bitcoin balances, it's not meant to handle cryptocurrency exclusively. It will also support loyalty points, game points, and cash balances. Bact has suggested that the app will be available widely in the summer of 2020. So in a few months, it should be available to everybody. You should be able to download the Bact app and put it on your smartphone and start custodying cryptocurrency and other kinds of points and rewards programs. Back's partnership with Starbucks, one of its longest running efforts, has come to fruition through the app. 
Starbucks has begun to support backed cash payments for some users as of March 2020. And so those who are beta testing the backed app and actually have it in their hands are able to use it at Starbucks. The company also plans to acquire Bridge2 Solutions, a loyalty and rewards company which will allow it to give its users payment options for a wide variety of companies and retailers. And so it's this Bridge2 Solution that I was referencing when I said that you'll be able to use airline points and points out of games and points from all kinds of different sources. You know, um, the company that my wife works for, they can award their employees different kinds of points that can be spent on their points app. Well, maybe those reward points will also be available for uh, Bax app solution. So it just depends on whether or not the company is actually hooked up with Bridge2 Solutions. However, competition in the mobile payments and reward space is fierce. Incumbents like Cash App and Loyalty App 5 Stars could make it difficult for the company to gain market share. So one of these things is, you know, it's one of those things where time will tell how well it goes, but it definitely looks interesting and has a lot of potential. And then next in the news is China's Digital Yuan reportedly to test in four different cities. So screenshots of a purported pilot version of the wallet app for China's forthcoming Digital Yuan are circulating on social media. So these are some of the screenshots that people have captured. Four cities selected for the trial. According to Ling Zhang, the app is available for download in four cities selected for the initial trial. She highlights the inclusion of uh, Zingan, a new metropolis located on the outskirts of Beijing, which has been the site of a so-dubbed Smart City Brain project. Commenting on the screenshots, CZ, who's the owner of uh, or CEO of Binance, uh, remarked on China's apparent execution speed in rolling out its trial for the central bank digital currency. As recently reported, China appears to have been accelerating the development of the digital yuan. On March 24th, the Bank of China was alleged to have completed the development of the crypto of the currencies basic functions and to have already moved on to drafting laws for its implementation. And so China is becoming very serious about pushing out their own central bank digital currency. And they, at the moment, they look to be the first of the large countries in the world to have accomplished that. You know, currently there's already a number of different countries that do have their own uh, digital currencies, including countries like the Bahamas and um, Venezuela, and there's a, a just a handful. I, I, I don't think it's even more than about five or six at this time, but there's a few different countries out there that have already introduced their own digital currencies. Um, and so it's, it's, it's actually quite exciting to see somebody... Uh, in the world governments, the big world governments actually releasing a central bank digital currency because all that means is it's going to push the rest of the world into having central bank digital currencies possibly earlier than they had planned. I know that in the United States that the um, Federal Reserve has hinted towards that they've been working on their own central bank digital currency. They've never given any specifics but there have been uh, comments from time to time that hint that that's in the works, that that's something that they've been developing in secret in the background. So, very interesting times. Now, how can I be of service to you? Please leave comments, questions, suggestions. Even if you disagree with what I say, I'd love to hear from you. Please leave that in the comment section below on the YouTube channel and I will respond back to you as soon as I possibly can. In the meantime, I hope that you'll like, subscribe, and hodl. And do me a favor, have a fantastic day.